Hi everyone, welcome back to Liz Sews, and I have another Spotlight Videos for Bra Builders Kit. Uh, this month I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to combine these all into the single video, just because in actuality they're all the same exact kit, just dyed in different colors. So let's take a look. So the one that I am showing here now is the T Rose colorway. So the lace is a really nice soft lace. Um, it's very flat, there's not much texture to it. So if you're somebody who finds the, the feeling of lace to be a little bit irritating, uh, this one is really, really nice because they're really, it just feels like stretchy fabric. You can't really feel the difference in there. Um, and it is nice and light and flowy compared to most laces, which I think you can see from the screen. Um, but it has this really cool sort of design on it that looks like little petals of a flower emanating out. Um, I did try to see if I could manipulate any of my patterns so that this looked like a heart, but I was not very successful at that. But maybe somebody else who's better at pattern matching may be, may be able some, to do something with that. So as I said, this is T Rose um, and this is a lace. So this lace will be, appear in all of these kits as well. These are just in different colors. So T Rose, this one over here is Orchid and this one is Antique Rose. I think. So here is the lace. Um, and then of course, as with all bra builders kits, you get your choice of fabrics. So micro duoplex or sheer cup lining, uh, either way, most of them match really, really well with the chosen color of your kit. Um, all of my examples that I'm going to show you today use sheer cup lining just because that's my preferred um, material to use with bras. And I like the fact with the sheer cup lining, you're able to sort of still see the design in the lace. Whereas if you put it over, um, if you put the lace over top of a micro duoplex, which is a lot more opaque of a fabric, you sort of lose some of that detail, but it might be, maybe you like that better. It's really up to you what you want to make for your bra. And then lastly, I have some power mesh dyed in T-Rose as well. Um, let's see. So we can take a look at the elastics. Of course, these are the same elastics that you get with any bra builders kit. Um, I have some 5 8 Pico elastic. We have some underwire channeling, some strapping elastic, and some half inch Pico. Twill tape. I think that's all that comes standard with the kit. I also have some extra elastics just to play around with. Um, of course, you get the, the hook and eye. So I do have some foldover elastic. This is the fancy foldover elastic, I think it's called. I've never used this before, and I actually really, really like it. So this one, it has a much more definitive area where the fold over elastic folds, which I find it's a lot easier to get a consistent look. Sometimes if I'm using regular fold over elastic, I might not get it folded exactly in the middle, whereas this one, that's not really ever a case. And then the inside, it's sort of plush like Pico elastic is. And then on the outside, it's more of a satiny finish. So it actually feels really nice against the skin as well. So I've, I haven't used this fancy uh, fold over elastic before, but I think I really, really like it, which is bad because it means I'm going to have to spend more money on buying fancy fold over elastic moving forward. Um, I also have some flat panty elastic here. You can see what it looks like dyed up in T rose. Um, so this one has a really, really low profile, so it makes it really comfortable on panties and definitely less likely to get visible panty line with this. So as I had said, this is the T Rose colorway and I'll just quickly take out the other colorways as well so you can see them side by side. Uh, T Rose, I would say is sort of, I think she describes it as a warm pink, um, but to me there is still a little bit of cool undertones with this, particularly in the elastics and the fabrics. The lace itself leans a little warm and I think that's because of the base color of the lace. And, um, so this one kind of reminds me of like a bubble gum or like a Barbie pink close to. And this one is Orchid, which is a really stunning purple based pink. 
purple. It's hard, like some lights I think it's pink and some lights I think it's purple, um, but it's really stunning. I think that this would look amazing with somebody who had more melanated skin than I do. Um, but it's a really cool color and I was really excited to get it. So again, you have lace, this is the sheer cup lining, um, micro duoplex and power net. They kind of all look the same, uh, same with the elastics on here. And then the last colorway she has available is antique rose. So this is the lace as it comes undyed. So the lace is not a white lace. It actually is a slightly pale pink lace. And so that's why when she's dying over top of it with orchid and tea rose, it does change the color just ever so slightly because the base is not a pristine white. So this is antique rose. Um, I guess the lace is an antique rose. The lace is just how it is. But then all of these have been dyed with antique rose to match the lace. So micro duoplex, sheer cup lining, and power net. And then of course the, the different findings that you can get in some raw builders. So let's take a look at the items that I've made with these kits. Push that out of the way. So full disclosure on this one, I made this bra several months ago and I actually purchased this lace from Lily Pad Designs. Lily Pad is no longer has this in stock, um, but like I said, it's the exact same lace that Bra Builders is using in her Antique Rose kit. And I had actually used Antique Rose for all of the findings in this when I had made it back then. So. Um, if you want to learn more about this bra, I would say check out some of my past videos. I'll try to link it up here when I talk about it, uh, just because I purchased this lace from somewhere else. I don't want to include it in a bra builder's video. So for the other two kits, I ha we had this idea of doing sort of uh, sexy and sweet. So being able to show that the same kit just in different colors, um, that it can, how it, the different ways it could be used. So I had a lot of fun with it. This is of course, out of the way. So this is of course the sweet option and I went a little bit overboard with this. Uh, I added these really cute uh, shoulder cap ruffle on here which was such a fun idea. Uh, I had seen Yang at the Tailor Made shop do something like this and I wanted to copy it and this seemed like the perfect time because I did have ruffles other places on this bra so this obviously wasn't a bra that was meant to be worn under clothing. Um, so I felt it was okay, I could go ahead and add this shoulder detail. So what I did is I cut out sort of like a semi-circle arc in there and then just ran a gathering stitch along the cut edge and gathered it together and then it sort of forced this into a sort of cap sleeve. Um, so once I gathered up that running stitch, I just sewed it on with a three steps exact onto my strap itself. I did put the bra on to make sure I understood where the top of the shoulder was gonna be and then I centered the widest portion of the lace on the top of the shoulder for there. Uh, for the bra itself, I've done a long line and then this is a two piece vertical seamed cup, but I cut the lace in, in sort of like a triangle like this instead of bringing the lace all the way up to the top of the cup because I was trying to make sort of those hearts but it did not turn out very well. So like I said, if you're you're better at pat pattern matching and stuff like that, maybe you could figure out how to turn this into a heart but I, I had some issues with it. Um, and then along the top edge here, I've actually, this is just sheer cup lining. I've done this detail before in bra tool and I wanted to see how it would turn out in sheer cup lining and it works really well. I mean, obviously sheer cup lining just like bra tool does not unravel, so I don't have to worry about that. And I actually thought this was a little bit easier to work with, and it gives you a little bit crisper of a ruffle detail. So I actually think it's better than bra tool doing this. So for making this, I just did a large strip of sheer cup lining. I think it's about one and a half inches wide. Uh, and then I just pinned some box pleats into it you could certainly measure it. I just did it by eye. Um, so pin them in and just ran a, a seam of stitching down the center of it to create this, this ruffle and attach it along the neckline edge of the bra. And then I finished it off with just some nice sweet silk ribbon here. This was also dyed to match in T-Rose. So 
I thought because this was the girly or sweet bra, I wanted to do a long line because to me that's like ultimate femininity. And I really wanted to show off this sort of um, lace. It's really, really pretty. So I did something slightly different with this because I didn't want to interrupt the lace with more stitching on here. So when I was putting on my bottom band elastic, I only attached the elastic to the lining, the sheer cup lining, and I left this lace sort of like free floating on top. Uh, and I, it, it's not the best idea. Um, I just wanted to try it and see, but I, I do get some sort of like extra wrinkling up in here because the lace is going to go through the path of res least resistance and start scooching up. So I think I might go ahead and tack it down at some key areas along the bottom here just to keep it from scooching up. Um, but it worked out pretty well in terms of getting rid of that stitching from the outside of the bra. Uh, not much to say on the back. It did do a U back on this. So I think ideally it would have been better to do cross back on there because I'm not getting as much support as I wish I had. And then I went ahead and used a four high hook and eye. Um, Bra Builder sells these four highs pre-finished so you don't have to do the stitching along the top and the bottom like you have to with the tape. And, and here's what it looks on the inside. So like I said, sheer cup lining all along the inside, lace on the outside, and everything dyed to match in T rows. And then to go along with this, I decided to make this cute little underwear bottom. And this is a simplicity pattern and I cannot remember the pattern to save my life. So I will pop in a picture up over here. Um, and I used the lace along with this sort of lovebirds knit print that she has this month for February, because I thought that this print pulls out a lot of really good colors from her kits. So it's sweet. And I think it, it matched that entire theme. And then, and then again, of course, I added this little silk ribbon up at the top to make it super sweet and delicate. So I've done knit on the front, um, finished the leg hole edges with that uh, fancy fold over elastic. And then I did some lace overlay just along the top tummy portion and the narrow flat elastic along the waistline of these. And then on the back of these is all lace. Um, it's, this is a more of a cheeky design underwear. Um, but yeah, just because this lace is really, really soft and really, really flat, I think it's going to work great for underwear. Um, because it definitely won't show underneath clothing and it's really, really soft. So that is the back and the front of these. And then because this knit print had so many of the colors, I went ahead and made another pair of underwear with that knit print um, because I felt like it could go with all of the different colors. And so I wanted one that wasn't specific to T-Rose. Obviously, because I'm using the T-Rose lace on here, then it doesn't work as well as a mix and match piece where this one I could wear with all of the different colors and not worry about it. So for him or her, I don't know. For her, I finished her off in this really sweet, narrow, um, scalloped edge lace along the leg lines. I really liked working with this. It's a great one pass um, finish on here. So I just sewed it along the on top of the fabric itself, stretching the lace while I was applying. And then I just trimmed away all of the excess from there. And so it gives you a really nice, delicate finish. And then along the top, I was looking at this lace and I accidentally applied it the wrong way around. So I was gonna apply it in a two pass where you, you sew it along the front and then you flip it up and then you sew it in a second pass. But I realized after I had sewn it on that I had sewn it with the right side facing out. So I didn't wanna flip it up because then it wouldn't be the nice side of the lace. So I, then I went ahead and just used some white fold over elastic along the top edge. And I kind of like how it turned out. Like it has this nice little lacy feminine detail that goes all the way around the waist, but it doesn't change the fit at all and I still get that nice sturdy finish with my fold over elastic that I prefer. So these are this is a pair of underwear that I think I could use in multiple places with different bras because it has so those many of those different pink colors incorporated into it um, and so that's why I chose the frost white findings to go along with this pair. And then last up I have to show you what I did with orchid. So orchid would be the naughty stepsister, the, the sexy version of the bra. Put these out of the way. 
So for this bra, I, because we, we were doing sexy and sweet, I wanted to do strappy details is what I really wanted to lean into as well as some sheer details. So on this bra, again, I've used the non-stretch sheer cup lining to line the cup. Um, and I did this sort of V design neckline and it's something that I had done last month in January. I think if you watch my channel, you'll have seen another bra that I did using blue and black uh, lace. So this one is a little bit more subtle because it's tone on tone, but I like the way you get the sheer up top and the sheer center bridge area and then the lace. Um, so it's really interesting utilizing that same method of getting that sort of V neckline. Um, but when it's tone on tone, it, it takes on a completely different look. So you can sort of see that a little bit better if I hold the light up behind it. And then of course I added these strappy details along the neckline. So I just attached um, a small piece of strapping here and then I used an extra ring to sort of work as my attachment point for here. If I had to do over again, I would probably use a larger ring for here because I used a half inch ring and putting three half inch straps into that is a little bit of a tight fit. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> and again, I attached this one first and then put the bra on and then figured out how long I needed the straps to be and ran them up through the ring itself. So you get that little bit more bondage-esque strappy feel to the bra. And then on the inside, um, again, sheer cup lining all along the cups, the bridge and the frame, and then just power net in the back. Uh, this lace is quite stretchy, so if you wanted to, you could cover the back uh, of the bra in lace as well if you wanted a more cohesive design where the lace was wrapping all the way around. Um, I don't think I needed to just because it's it's so close of a color match already that I didn't feel it was necessary to sort of continue the lace over there but anyone you know when you're making a bra you can choose whatever you want to do. And then to go along with this bra, I needed a sexy bottom because lovebirds just don't cut it when you're thinking sexy. So I decided to do a thong for this. And this is actually the Astrid thong from Beware. And I've just sort of lowered the waistline just a tad. And I added some extra strappy details to it. So for this thong, I've done the stretch lace in the front and then power net in the back. I've covered the leg hole edges with fold over elastic and the waistline with this thin um, waist, thin panty elastic, I think that's what it's called. And then I added these sort of straps after I finished. So I added them and attached them to the center front and the center back of the thong. And they sort of like sit up a little bit higher, like around the natural waist where the thongs sit at like a, the hip line. So I think it does add a really nice, cool element to this design. And these strappy details is something that you could add relatively easy to any bottom pattern if you wanted to add more strappy elements. So this is my sexy take on this kit. I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at these and I will see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.